I'm Tim and this is Tim B at C and uh, I'm going to try to give you something a little different view. I'm work, currently working on my time off to try to pay for some of the exciting future I hope to have on my other times off this summer. <laughs> More to come on that later. But anyway, I'm working over on another boat. It's actually a boat that I worked on for many years uh, when I first came over to this company almost 10 years ago and uh, it's very similar to the boat that you're used to seeing me on except it's in the 4200 class so each engine has about four more cylinders on it and some things that make this boat a little bit different obviously than being a little bigger and having bigger tankage and that sort of thing but uh, it's also got quart nozzles and I've talked about quart nozzles before in the past and hopefully uh, you guys can visualize this. Quart nozzles are something that go around each propeller and they're permanently fixed there. And if you think of how a airplane wing actually generates lift, the leading edge of the quart... Hey Tim, where oh, do you want to start? Go ahead and start the stern and work to the bow. Copy that. So the leading edge of the... Uh, in other words, in front of the propeller is usually a little bit fatter than it is on the trailing edge, back by the rudders. And if you got an airplane wing and wrapped it all the way around the propellers, it would kind of make a nozzle like this. Some of the things that quart nozzles do is they produce a lot of the energy that would normally get from the water that was slung out from centrifugal force out you know away from the center of the shaft is directed behind you which improves the efficiency of driving ahead there's probably some other uh, benefits as well but uh, you know as far as hydrodynamically how that works but all I can tell you is that quart nozzles usually give you a little bit more pulling power they come at a redu reduction of overall speed because it does add drag if you're going, if you want to go, that's why they don't usually use quart nozzles on high speed things, but things that need a lot of power, they use them on. And uh, they also come at usually a reduction of maneuverability. Uh, the boat that I am usually on is an open wheel boat, in other words it has no quart nozzles surrounding them, and uh, it can be very agile. The thing that I miss about these 4200s when I'm on the 3000 class boat that I'm usually on is what we've called, if you've heard me, if you excuse the colloquialism, you've heard me say this before, it's, it, we call it, we, the term is ass. In other words, how much the boat weighs gives you the ability to pull the bow of the barge around as opposed to if you don't have any ass the bow stays of the barge stays there and as you try to turn it you just end up moving the stern of the tug and the barge to get where you want to go so anyway we are in Marcus Hook Marcus Hook up in the Delaware River uh, pretty far up the Delaware Bay we've concluded bunker operations with this container ship and the guys are taking in the lines now and uh, we'll come out of here. It's a beautiful Saturday. 
And something that's special about Saturdays, some of you might know if you're a patron, pa Saturday, if I do all my homework and I get everything right, get everything done right, um, Saturday I usually try to uh, release to my patrons a special link to next Tuesday's video. So they get to see videos early and they get to see it ad-free. So if uh, you ever had any inkling of being uh, part of the Patreon crew, that's just uh, one of the benefits, but the real benefit you get is by feeling good about joining a cause that's a good cause and helps out a good thing. At least I think so anyway. <laughs> anyway, so here in in basically Philadelphia, it's Marcus Hook, Pennsylvania, but we're going to call it Philadelphia because that's the kind of that region that we're in. We have to, uh, we don't have VTS like they have in New York, but the pilots have something. I just got to call them real quick. Philadelphia Maritime from the Susquehanna. Good afternoon, Cap. Uh, Susquehanna, we're shipside down in uh, Marcus Hook, and uh, we're made up to the uh, light tank barge, double skin 32. Yeah, you're starting to fall back. Uh, we still and need to uh, get we're going to get underway for Kane's Anchorage. All right, coming ahead. Uh, you were coming broken, broken up, sir. I, I didn't get the name of the vessel. I heard uh, Marcus Hook Anchorage. That was it. Yeah, sorry about that, Cap. Um, yeah, we're at Marcus Hook shipside. We're going to be taking the DS32 up to Kane's Point Anchorage. Again. It's the Tug Susquehanna. There we go. Much better. Susquehanna. Roger that, sir. I appreciate it. Getting underway from Marcus Oak. Bound for Kane's Point. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Now we just get a little security call. Security call. Tug Susquehanna. Getting underway from shipside Marcus Hook. We'll be turning around. Be inbound. Bound up for Cane Point Anchorage. Tug Susquehanna. Okay, so now they've got all the lines off, but one dropped in the water, so I'm not going to do anything until they get the line up because as I drive ahead, the resistance of the water on the line makes it very hard to pull a big heavy line like that up. So I think what I'm going to do is this barge doesn't have rubber all the way around the corner. But you know what? I think I might be able to walk it off a little bit. So in this particular case, I'm going to set my rudder about 15, 15 degrees to starboard and get ready to twist off of here. All right, Adam, you got that line up enough so I can start uh, walking off? Yeah, we're good. All right, here we go. We'll call it uh, 1605 underway. Copy that. For those that have been paying really good attention, uh, you might notice I just said 1605 underway. That means it's five minutes after four. And you might say, geez, right, Tim, what are you doing being up at that hour of, of the day? I should be sleeping. Well, in the case that I'm working over like I am right now, I, uh, I like watch the camera jumping around here, um, I'm right, working over as a mate. About two and a half feet off. All right, two and a half feet off. So I'm filling in as a mate right now on this boat. You're about four feet off, blowing off all the time. Which is quite which is really the preferred way if you're going to work extra. It's much nicer having to not have the responsibilities of a captain, especially on another boat with another crew. They do things their way, and I can just sit back. And about 10 feet off, falling off all the time. It's easier for me being one person to, uh, very good, to adapt to their ways than having four or five other people having to adapt to my ways. <laughs> so that works out well. All right. So I just walked it off with just a little bit of right wheel and a left twist to do do my uh, walk. All right, very good. Uh, 
We'll get underway. It's going to be quite a while till we get up there. I'll give you a call when we get there, but it'll probably be on the other watch. Copy that. All right, so now we're far enough off the ship. I'm going to go all stop with my port engine. My starboard engine's already coming yes, ahead. Jim, Hamburg, Tug, coming. So now we're going to go, and I could just fall right behind the ship, but there's a tug and barge uh, yes, behind us. Uh, so we are coming alongside you now. Okay, you have your crew stand by at the boat. Get your line full, please. Okay, you are coming. Thank you. To error on the side of safety, I'm going to go up and turn around the bow of the ship so we have plenty of room and uh, won't be any surprises. And uh, I don't know how well this is working because this is a not my regular boat. I had to be creative of where I put my cameras, but I've got a camera uh, on the uh, chart plotter. It's probably going to be a distorted, interesting view there, but I felt so bad about the last video I put up that didn't have a... Uh, that, that I had thought I was shooting the chart plotter, but I guess I guess I'd never press start. Or sometimes when you turn it on, I inadvertently turn the camera on, not knowing that it's on. I go to press the button again to turn it on, and I'm actually turning it off. And so, anyway, that's what's happening now. I don't know if you can still see it on my camera head here, but the pilot is actually heaving up the anchor right now. So we got away from him as they were heaving the anchor. See that thing coming up? Massive links, probably <laughs> just about a foot a foot across each one of them. But they're coming up nice and slow, so it's good that we got out of here just in time. Now the tide's flooding right now, and you can tell that because all the boats are headed down river. That means they're on their anchor and the tide's flooding inbound. As we start turning around the corner around the ship, you're going to start seeing the Marcus Hook refineries. And interestingly enough, this is something I normally wouldn't say, but we have so many professional aviators that follow the channel. Um, one of the one of the airline companies, to like say, if if you've been following the channel, you'll know that uh, we try really hard not to mention directly by name tugs, companies, or customers. Uh, you'll hear me say stuff on the radio, and that we consider that being indirect because as soon as I key the mic, it's public domain. But anyway, there was a refinery that was up here, and I. I had heard that it was going out of business. It was a very busy refinery for many, many years. And I had heard that it had... I, 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 now, I don't know if any of this is true, but the story I heard, and in fact, I think there's a couple people that have written in the comments that they've actually worked at this refinery, and they might be able to tell me more about this. But uh, And if you did, you'll recognize which refinery I, I'm looking at here. Um, that apparently with the tighter restrictions that the EPA had, it was going to cost a lot of money for this refinery to stay in operation, and so the oil company that owned the refinery looked for a new customer. And the th thing that I thought was really interesting, and I don't know if it's still the case now, but I had heard that uh, one of the airline companies, major airline company, um, actually bought the refinery. and we're going to refine their own fuel and it's it's a whole process so just because you're refining fuel and you want aviation fuel you might have a whole bunch of of aviation fuel but you're going to have a lot of other byproducts as well in other words uh most of the bunker fuel we have is byproduct from the refinery process um so so even though an airline company might own this and like I say I don't know I had heard that there was a problem I think they had a I don't know I, I, it's been a while since I've been up in this area but I'm sure somebody in the comments will straighten me out with a proper history of all this but don't use the name if you do that <laughs> anyway uh, they uh, they make all their their own jet fuel and uh, sell the rest of the products for things like this like bunker and stuff so I thought that was kind of cool Security, security, Clipper Cirrus, start taking lines, sun, turn around, outbound for safety, Clipper Cirrus.
All right, so now we're just coming around nice and easy around the ship. If you're looking at the chart plotter, this is us. This is the ship we are at. Here's the channel. Hey, good afternoon now. We're even here if you wanted to hold up and let you get out first. Pleasure. Uh, I think just keep her coming. Yeah, uh, we're just going to keep her coming. Now the orders on this barge, as they stand right now, we have to wait until like 2200 tonight, or 10 o'clock tonight, to uh, bring it to a refinery way up the river. I say way up the river, it's not way up the river, but it's over in a part of New Jersey called uh, Del Air. So if you're familiar with that area, you'll know where Del Air is. Anyway, uh, but since this barge doesn't have to be there until 2200, and because this is a uh, operation that's, you know, the Delaware River is uh, busy with ships, but it's not quite the same as the Port of New York and New Jersey, which, you know, we're always kind of going. We'll probably stay right with this barge, and since it's only going to take us, back on tug. very good, thank you, good job out there. Then, uh, in in instead of just going up and docking this thing what we're going to do is go three quarters or eighty percent of the way there to a place called Cane Point Anchorage and uh, we'll anchor the barge up until tonight and then just go right around the corner and uh, tie it up so it can load alright so my turn's just about complete I've stopped my twist bow's coming over so I can straighten out the rudder and start to come ahead on both engines I don't know if you can see it or not but there's the tug and barge that uh, I was worried about that if I back down if I back down I could totally do that but it's it's why bother I'm not in a hurry I don't have to go anywhere so instead of backing down and trying to get in between the anchor road of the barge and the stern of the ship I said you know what I'll just drive out around everybody and got plenty of time we can be safe all right let me bring the plotter back to where I can see a little bit better there we go it's interesting going between different tugs there's the tugs in our fleet usually have one of two different types two different manufacturers of electronics and the one that the 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 boat that I'm on although you guys are very generous in the comments and Lord knows I'm very proud of the shape that the crew has kept it in. It uh, looks beautiful and some might even say it looks brand new. It's actually, I've been saying it's 11 years old. It's at, at, This June it's going to be 12 years old. And uh, a lot of the electronics on there have been, they were state of the art 12 years ago. And uh, the way <laughs> electronics change... Hey Jim, just to let you know, there's a little bit of slack in these bush cables. Yeah, I'm just going to go easy, and then when uh, watch change comes, I'll suck it up. Okay, just wanted to let you know. Appreciate that. Thank you. So the deckhand's just telling me that he saw that the push cables aren't as tight as they could be, and the wind's not blowing too hard. It's blowing seven knots right now, and so, uh, we're like I say, we're not going We're not going to break any speed records. We're just going easy, so if I was really worried about it, I'd go tighten it up, but... I didn't feel it. Sometimes you feel it loose when you're moving it. I didn't. It didn't feel too loose to me. So uh, I'll just keep it rolling like this, and then when I relieve the watch to the captain, I'll go down there and tighten it up a little bit more. But uh, anyway, what was I telling you before? Gas cam, chamber, tug, mechanical, bunker bar, Yeah, I don't. I don't remember what that. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I was talking about the different electronics. Yeah, so uh, our, our boat is going to be 12 years old in June, the boat that I'm normally on. And because of that, um, Gas uh, 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 electronics uh, yeah, has changed. Like if, if, if you think yeah, about the cell phone and its capabilities and that you had 12 years ago, well, I would say that maybe that and maybe more so has, is the case with how uh, electronics have, have advanced. 
So some of these other boats have newer systems, or they might even be in this case, I believe this boat that I'm on is actually older than the boat that I'm normally on, but it's had a whole, had the old electronics pulled off and they put the new suite of electronics on. And uh, they're very nice, but you know, it just doesn't feel like home. Sometimes the nicer, newer, more gadgets and all that sort of stuff that you have, oh man, those things are beautiful. But you know, there's a feeling of comfortability, of familiarness that you have, even if it's stuff that's relatively old. And it's kind of funny, we say, oh, 12 year old electronics. Uh, the electronics on, on that boat are incredible compared to uh, what they, I mean, the company I used to work for before uh, I came here, back then, I mean, we're going back 20 years now, but none of their boats had any chart plotters at all. And I remember when the first AISs started showing up on the boats and there were these big boxes that just basically, they, they reminded me of the old Loran A's. I don't know if you remember them or not. But anyway, uh, I'm just rambling on here, forgive me. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get at is that I, coming to another boat, there's a lot of things that you have to do. One is that there's personality differences. Um, in my case, there's a different watch. So uh, I'm over here and uh, what I'm used to working, the hours I'm used to working, I'm working opposite those, which is like I say, isn't e it, it's not difficult at all. It's just not, you're not f familiar. And the guys on this boat are great. And they're a great crew and they work well. And I've known the captain since almost since I started here. And he and I have been friends for many, many years. And so all of that is fine. But at the same time, it's not your boat, and it's not your bed, and it's not, you know, the, 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 the TV on the galley, it, it, on in the galley is on different stations than it is on yours. The electronics work a little different. I, last night I was freezing to death up here because I couldn't figure out how to turn the heat on up here. And uh, I knew they had heat in the air conditioner, but I was like, man, I don't know. Some, sometimes a lot of guys, they don't run the air conditioner until the summer, so you don't know if... It, I didn't want to start turning things on in the middle of the night, blowing a circuit breaker or something like that. So I froze to death here last night. But those are some of the things that make it different when you work over on another boat. But I'm almost two weeks in, and... Uh, Let's see, it's Saturday now, and on Wednesday I'll be going back to my boat for another three weeks and be back back at home with my crew and uh, my boat, and it uh, makes me feel all happy. <laughs> so if you're ever working on another boat, remember that uh, you're the odd man out, and uh, you need to adapt to their ways. Don't have them adapt to yours. <laughs> at least that's my mantra anyway. And uh, do your job, and everything will be fine. But... Uh, Thank you for coming along with me. If you're looking right here, this is the Commodore Barry Bridge. And uh, thank you for coming along with me. And I hope you guys be safe out there. And I want to thank all you guys. You know, I don't, I don't do this enough. I, I re really need to thank you guys for helping grow in my channel and supporting me. And, um, you know, obviously a special thanks to the patrons. They're really cool. They pay the bills. But, uh... All you guys that like and subscribe and comment, um, it's really, it, it's awesome. I, I, you know, I, I feel like we've built a community together. And hopefully, you know, if, if, uh, if, you know, by all means, I am not the saltiest mariner at all. And uh, I, I'm certainly not the biggest licensed or anything like that. But if I can share some of the things that I've learned over time with some of the people that are, in, whether it be the recreational world or somebody coming up or, you know, coming up through the ranks, if I can share anything like that, it makes it all worthwhile. And when you guys write and ask questions, you know, um, I've had a lot of comments that say people say, "Oh, I can't believe you respond to all the co all the comments." T t to be quite honest with you, I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do that. I, I, I'm, I, I would like to do that forever, but I never suspected that the channel would have grown as big li as as much as it has. It's gotten bigger and bigger than I ever expected, and uh, as that has happened, my enthusiasm has grown, and hopefully, uh, you know, I've found an audience, or an audience has found me, and I've found my voice to speak to them, and hopefully that's something that works for me and works for all of you. And, uh, well, I say hopefully, but it obviously has, and that's where I really want to thank all of you guys. So, 
Thank you so much. You guys rule. And as always, be safe out there, and I'll see you on the one.